Step 1. Familiarize yourself with the equipment. This particular pump is center hung between two bearings. Standing close to it, you can tell the pump is operating very smoothly. It is still, cool, and quiet. It turns relatively slowly, and the impeller has eight vanes. Step 2. Calculate important speeds and frequencies. The one times turning speed of the shaft is always the first speed you'll want to determine. In this case, the shaft is turning at 9.14 Hz. The signature vibration we would expect from a pump is a vane pass frequency coming from the impeller. Since this impeller has eight vanes, we would expect a vibration frequency at eight times the turning speed of the shaft, which equals 73.18 Hz. Step 3. Locate the one times in the spectral data. Let's look first at a spectrum taken at the outboard bearing, and don't let the size of these peaks fool you. Look at the amplitude scale. It only reaches to 0 .008 inches per second of velocity. These are very, very small vibrations we're seeing. The graph has been scaled to make the peaks more visible. By moving the cursor around, we find a peak at 9.14 Hz, and we have an exact match for the calculated one times. Step 4. Identify signature vibration patterns. The signature vibration we're looking for is the vein pass at 73.18 Hz. There are several significant peaks to the right of the one times, and with a little searching we can find an exact match at 73.18 Hz. Step 5. Identify other vibrations present. When we mark the one times with the cursor, the analysis software automatically identified several harmonics. This would suggest shaft movement, but remember these are tiny low amplitude vibrations, well within specs. We also find a family of peaks around 500 Hz. Now, there are a couple of things this could be. First, it could be that the bearing is breaking through its lubrication and we are seeing rub. This seems unlikely, however, because the amplitude is so low. Second, this pattern is often associated with pump cavitation. Exactly what is and what is not cavitation is a little complicated. But cavitation involves bubbles in the liquid supply that explode on contact with the impeller. Long-term cavitation will leave pits in the impeller veins. Cavitation can appear almost anywhere on the spectrum, and it often takes on the shape of a mound, much like this one. However, this would be a surprisingly low amplitude for cavitation. Let's zoom in and look at the peaks more closely. They appear poorly formed and random. Measuring the distance between the peaks does not reveal a significant frequency such as the one times or vein pass frequency and the distance is not uniform between different pairs of peaks. If we look at the time domain, we find low amplitude peaks that are recurring but not entirely uniform. If we measure the distance between two peaks, we find a delta time of 1.953 milliseconds, which converts to 0 .00195 seconds. Round it. To convert time to frequency, take the reciprocal. 1 divided by 0 .00195 equals 512.82 Hz. A number that certainly seems consistent with the peaks around 500 Hz in the frequency domain. These vibrations are real, they're just very small. This probably is a process vibration. The pump is running so smoothly, the vibration probe may be picking up traveling frequencies through the pedestal, or it may be that we're seeing minor surges in the liquid supply. Now let's look at a spectrum taken at the inboard bearing. The one times is at a higher amplitude than in the previous spectrum, so there may in fact be a little shaft movement, but amplitude is still very low and the one-times harmonics have disappeared. 
So the problem, if we can call it a problem, is very minor. The vein pass frequency is also at a low amplitude and does not generate harmonics. So let's look at the family of peaks between 300 and 400 hertz. The pattern looks similar to a gear mesh frequency, but there are no gears in this pump. So what might this be? Well, sometimes you get lucky and you catch a bearing defect in its infancy before the fault frequencies we're used to seeing can form. If you find a family of regularly spaced peaks at a relatively high frequency, measure the space between the peaks. In this case, we find a delta frequency of 9.151 Hz, which very closely approximates the one times. Normally, this finding would tend to confirm a bearing problem, but perhaps not in this case. There is something else here. Notice that the tallest peak is found at 359.75 Hz, or very nearly 360. After you've accumulated a little experience, you'll recognize this pattern right away. Anytime you find a peak at 36 Hz, and sidebands of turning speed, look for a DC motor. Silicone control rectifiers, known as SCRS in the Motor Control Center, convert the incoming AC voltage to DC voltage by performing a half-wave rectification. Since AC voltage in North America is supplied at 60 Hz, and many DC motors have six poles, a peak at 360 Hz is very common. Let's confirm our finding in the time domain. We find a pattern of recurring prominent peaks. Measuring between the peaks, we find a delta time of 110.9 milliseconds, which converts to 0 0.1109 seconds. Taking the reciprocal, 1 divided by 0 0.1109 equals 9.02 Hz rounded, which very nearly approximates the 1 times frequency. The predominant vibration is the turning of the shaft, nothing else. The peaks between 300 and 400 Hz are electrical vibrations, not mechanical vibrations. You'll learn more about them in the course on motors. Step 6. Evaluate equipment and make recommendations. For all practical purposes, this pump has no problems. All your pumps should run as smoothly as this one. You'll want to continue monitoring it, of course, but for now there is nothing to fix.